welcome back and we're at April favourites and I've got quite a mixed bag for you which I'm quite excited to show you. Okay first beauty favourite and it's a simple one and I don't know why I've not featured it before but I use it time and time again and it's the Q-Tex Nourishing Nail Polish Remover and I've gone back to this because for me it just properly takes my nail varnish off and I really like the one for weak nails now my nails aren't particularly weak but I love this because it's a whitening formula so it really leaves my nails clean. I used to use the Bourjois Nail Pot, which I think is a great idea, but it just doesn't really take all the varnish off, and I was always following it up with this. Also, it smeared a lot of the varnish, so it was actually going into the skin around my nail beds, which just made my nail beds really sore. So I've gone back to just using this. Great product, easy to get hold of, a really good price, and it's a repurchase of so many years. Um, yeah, it should have been in favourites a long time ago, but a definite favourite. Not just this month, but every month. Also, the seagulls are around, if you can hear them. There's sort of a bit of a turf war going on, and they're trying to get their designated nests sorted out. So if you hear a lot of arguing, it's seagull issues. I thought I'd just tell you that. Okay, my next favourite is the Oskia Renaissance Cleansing Gel and I've absolutely loved using this in the morning. I either use this or I use the Sunday Riley Ceramic Slip Cleanser. Really, really soft and gentle on the skin. I use two or three pumps on a dry face and massage it in. I either remove it with just splashing on water or I use a cloth or a flannel and it lasts for ages. I keep using it and thinking that's it it's the end and then it goes again really lovely product and it just gets my skin ready for the the rest of the products i'm going to use in the day gorgeous it's vitamins a c and e omega-6 pumpkin enzymes uh chamomile and rose gorgeous very lightly scented product but i've absolutely loved it i can't recommend it enough okay this little beauty um i've hit pan which is a rarity you know me I rarely hit pan with my colour products I'm proud of myself round of applause thank you hit pan and it's this teeny tiny little thing and it's from Bobbi Brown don't we all love a little bit of Bobbi Brown and it's her corrector in the shade bisque and I use this before I apply any other base product before my foundation and the shade is just great it's a peachy tone which for my dark circles just tones them down um it's not going to get rid of them i know that it's i'd have to put layers and layers and layers of makeup on to get rid of them but it works fabulously it presses in nicely with the setting brush from real techniques it works super well if you just use your ring finger to press but a gorgeous gorgeous product and the fact that i have absolutely hit pan is a sign how much i love this definite favorite for the last few months i absolutely love this product back to nails and i've always been a nail varnish wearer from quite a young age probably my teens although at school we weren't allowed to wear nail varnish it's very strict at my school but i've always worn red varnishes very strong varnishes and I always use a base coat and I've used high-end and drugstore but I found a really lovely base coat from Collection and it's the two-in-one base coat and ridge filler. Now I don't have ridges in my nails but this is just a beautiful consistency and it has a pinky tone so you could actually wear this on its own it just brightens the nails really really pretty it's great because I obviously I mean I've got quite a dark polish on today but I find nothing stains my nails at all gorgeous good price easy to get hold of and it's actually one of the best nail bases I've used um, this next one is featured in a haul video and I have absolutely loved it and it's one of those colours that you just, you know if you're nipping to the shops, if you're like me and you don't want to scare people when you're going shopping, you can just whip it onto the lips 
and it's great. It's a flattering colour, but it's not too in your face. And it's the Makeup Academy Sweet Sheen Lip Balms, and this is the Coral Reef colour. I've also got the Rumba, Rouge Rumba, which is nice. But this is just a warm coral pink tone. It works with all looks, so you can have really strong makeup, a really soft makeup. You can have nothing on, but just have this. It's very moisturising on the lips. It's not sticky or tacky. And although it's only a balm, it does actually hold its colour quite well. I've loved it. And so my last beauty favourite. And this has been a fragrance favourite off and on for many years. I discovered it when I first started working in a department store. And the Yves Saint Laurent counter that I worked on was directly opposite the Thierry Mugler and Angel counter. And as you do, you have the store to yourself first thing in the morning when you go down to the shop floor. It's like being a VIP. And you go around and you try the makeup and you spray the fragrances. And I just loved this fragrance. And it's Angel by Thierry Mugler. It's a very heavy, strong scented fragrance. They do others in the range, but this for me is the best I've ever used. Now this is the refill bottle and you just decant from this into whatever fragrance bottle you have and it comes with a little funnel to make it easier. So that's the bottle, but my favourite um, object that I use to spray my fragrance. Now, I don't know if you can still get these. This is the Angel Compact. It's absolutely gorgeous. It was a gift from a work colleague and I absolutely love it. And you just literally press it obviously and spray. To refill it there's a tiny little button at the side of the compact and as you can see the back opens up you take the little bottle out and you fill it from there. But I adore this and whenever I bring it out people always comment it. it's absolutely gorgeous I have had a quick look around and I can't see anything like it but it's an absolute favorite because it was given to me by such a dear friend but I just love the look of it so Angel I have been spraying Angel all month okay on to books and what I'm currently reading um, I've got two on the go one is Kate Atkinson's Human Croquet. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know I love Kate Atkinson's work. I just love the way she writes. It just flows for me. I find it such a great read. And her stories are fantastic. They're so interwoven with just life and history. And oh, it's just beautiful. And they hook me from the first page. And this is actually, I think, one of the best starts of a book that I've ever read. I've just started it. I can't wait to work my way through it. It's one of those books where when I start, I just don't want to stop and do anything else. But really good. If you've not tried anything from Kate Atkinson, you must. She's just a superb writer. My next is this quite heavy, heavy offering. And this is the story of Alice. It's the story of Lewis Carroll and the secret history of Wonderland. And it's by Robert Douglas Fairhurst. Um, I'm an Alice in Wonderland fan. Always loved it. And I always felt it was one step above the normal children's stories. There was just something dark about it. And I used to love, I had such an imagination from an early age. And I used to love the idea that, you know, there was another land behind my wardrobe and Narnia was there. And I love the idea of lying on the lawn in the garden and seeing a, you know, white rabbit and going on an adventure. So I adored Alice in Wonderland. I just thought it was genius. And Alice through the looking glass as well. But this is all about Lewis Carroll himself. Um, and it's a difficult one because recently there was a documentary in the UK about Lewis Carroll and sort of querying his behaviour and his fondness for the company of children and sadly this is the world that we are in now. Um, and having been a nursery nurse, I can honestly say that I often do prefer the company of children. I think you learn a lot from them. They're very honest, they're very funny, and they don't take life too seriously. So I kind of get that side of it. But obviously some of the things that he did were questionable, the photographs he'd taken. And it's very, very difficult to sort of shut that out once you've heard it and, and seen it. But I was very interested to sort of read this behind the story of Wonderland and really understand the man that wrote it as well. Obviously a genius, but there's a fine line um, with geniuses, I think. But yes, I'm looking forward to working my way through this. I've only just started it, but... Um, it won't ever stop me loving the story of Alice in Wonderland, but you do have to look at both sides of things. So, yeah, got that to read. 
And finally, um, this is something I was watching from iTunes and I'm very interested in documentaries about um, style, fashion, beauty, but I love to know about the people behind them and I really loved the September issue about Anna Wintour and Vogue and getting the September issue up. If you've not seen it you must watch it, I find things like that fascinating. People watching, fly on the wall kind of things. I don't like programs like Big Brother, I think that's just too much people performing and playing a part but I think when you're seeing people genuinely working in the business and their craft I find it fascinating and this was one I've absolutely loved and it's about Bill Cunningham who writes for the New York Times now he's into his 80s and he rides around New York on his bicycle and basically takes photographs of people and the clothes they wear what I love about him is the fact that he's not interested in celebrity. He couldn't care less who these people are. He doesn't know most of the celebrities, but what he does do is he picks the lady or the gentleman off the street that's just thrown something together, but to him it works and his knowledge is fantastic. And he takes photographs on proper film. There's no digital and he has these films you know, processed and he gets somebody at the New York Times to help him put it all together. It's just the most fascinating documentary. It is available on iTunes. I love it. I have it saved and I can watch these things over and over again. But watching his work and his enthusiasm and he's such a dignified, gentle soul, it's an absolute pleasure to just see this program. And some of the characters that he knows just wonderful really great eccentric people who have a story to tell and are sort of lost somewhere in the documentary he actually lives in an apartment attached to Carnegie Hall I mean that took me a few moments to absorb he lives in an apartment attached to Carnegie Hall and then there's all these really eccentric people that also live there with wonderful stories to tell who knew Andy Warhol and it just goes on and when they filmed this he was fighting to stay in the building as were a lot of the people there I don't know if he's still there if he had to move very sad if he did have to because it was such an amazing apartment he had where his bed was just sort of on books because he said you know who needs a kitchen who needs this you know he's focused on his work the whole time but I believe he's still working well into his 80s and just the most genuine unassuming individual I think I've probably seen on film great great documentary so if you are interested do look for it it's Bill Cunningham New York um, yeah, just really, really good. And there's a few celebrities that appear in there as well talking about him. And he is actually one of the few photographers that Anna Wintour will actually stand and pose for as she's dashing in and out of places. She actually takes the time to pose for him and obviously holds him in a lot of respect because she appears in the documentary. So that's it. And breathe. I don't want this video to be too long and I just wanted to get that love out for Bill Cunningham. The man's just a genius. I hope you enjoyed those favourites. Um, I hope you enjoyed the different bits in there as well. I will keep dropping stuff like that in. Not every month I get a chance to watch things and do things but it's always nice to see what people are interested in. That's it for now. Thank you as ever for watching, for your support, for subscribing. I'll see you later guys. Thank you, bye.